Uh, here's somebody who had asked about a play that we made so successful. Well, there's all kind of obviously defenses, but I'll put one up there. Uh, this is North, North 3 4, they call it, I guess. Uh, one of the key plays in high school, college, or pro is the play pass. And that is very, the very essence of the passing game. It is for us at Stanford. It is for virtually everybody that is willing to give it to time. So the play pass, obviously, is faking a run, then throwing the ball. So one run that we've run at Stanford, one play, would be a trap play in which this man goes there, and this man pulls, and this man double teams, and we trap and put it back and through. The point is, we're going to try to fake that and pull this guy forward. We're going to pull that guard through the line and throw at him. We're going to aggressively block him. We're going to double down hard. So if this guy's been coached, he's going to fly up in that line to stop that trap. So you've seen Montana do this. This man's going to drive at him, depending on who we're playing that week. He'll either stay blocking, if it's Lawrence Taylor, as you might guess. But if it's someone else, he may bump him or to say to hell with it and break into the flat. That would be where you'd see Roger Craig. This man, West Pass Protect, because we've taken him out of it. These two have these two. So if he blitzed, he'd get him. If he came this way, he'd get him. But these two have him. The guard has him. The fullback runs a full speed course through here. Nobody touches him. He turns right back and stands here. But the key guy is Dwight Clark. Because Dwight is going to go up five and angle in. We're going to take three big steps after the fake, but the fake is just a token fake. It's up to the back and hit Dwight nine yards deep running right there. The, the guy we've affected is this linebacker. We've got a lot of lines there. But this backer's been pulled forward, opening a hole in his own defense. If this man dropped here, we throw to him. If he blitzes, we're throwing the ball. If he goes flat, we're throwing to him. So that would be red right, pass 331 next slam. And that, that is a very basic play. Now we would change up, I'll use this, this fellow's uh, deal here. We would uh, change up if these people were covered. We would change it up because in this case we'd man block it or conceivably we wanted to trap it and the back would have him. But the point is, a play pass to pull this guy up and hit a moving receiver. That is the best single thing there is. And this is where Dwight made his career. In later years, we got good enough so that this man ran seven and broke. So Joe could, using that technique I talked about, hitting on his right foot. Now this. This takes some practice, but what we want is for Joe to take the ball. He makes this move right here, he pulls the ball back, takes the third step, throw. So you simply from here, here, throw. Well, we got to a point later where Joe would go here, 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 look, keep this right foot bent, sit right back on it, then from here, look over to Freddie Solomon here. So looking here, boom, we hit late on that side. Figuring that, the right ahead. Figuring that, uh, figuring that, if they collapsed with their weak safety over to Dwight, Freddie would have a running start over on the other side. So that depended heavily on Montana or whoever it might be, DeBerg, whoever it was, sitting on that right leg and keeping it bent. This is something I, I later I developed just recent years because before I always wanted to hit step and bounce and all that, but just sitting on that leg sitting right on it looking and throwing, or sitting on it and then going to someone else and shoving off. Now the guy that could do that best was Dan Fouts. He had a great way of sitting on his right foot. But that was uh, a three-step drop, play pass, and hit him, hitting a moving target. Now when would you use it? About every other week. When would you use it? First and 10. When would you run the trap? Third down. And one of the keys for you in your passing game is to set up, obviously, set up your, your uh, passes with your runs. So often, you can throw a 
play on a passing down your run or a running down your pass. Okay, let's look at another combination. That was a three-step slam off a of play pass. The next one is, now again, we vary the split every time. One week, this split would be one yard. The next week, it could be 12, it could be six, depending on who we're trying to beat, and I'll get into that. Is to run your draw play. And the draw play with a great back is probably the best single thing he can do because he has time to see what's going to happen. But now the draw play is run. Basically, we run it off of this man's block, but if he's not covered, we run it off of this man's block. We get our heads on the inside, I go to the block, but here's the draw play. Now, when do you run a draw play? Well, you run the draw play on first and ten. Most people want to wait till third down to run a draw. When the other team is yelling out, look out for screens and draws, you're going, oh, jeez, they just figured out what we're going to do. <laughs> so, so in your particular case, the absolutely critical thing is when you run your draws. First and ten, beautiful times. Because now, on third down, you fake the draw. Now, you know you need the first down. You've run the draw effectively on first down or ineffectively. But now on third down, a critical down, you're going to run a play pass in which you fake that same draw. So in this particular case, again, we're getting basically the same kind of blocking. He checks and is in a flat. He's going to come out and get this guy if he blitzes, if not turn back. He's going to have the responsibility for him. He's got him, he's got him all the way across. So sometimes we'll double down. We have other ways to do it. But what we want to do is fake the draw and throw the hook. So we run the draw on first down, and now it's third down and six. Here we come back. We fake the draw, and we throw the hook. Both backers are coming forward. Now, in this particular case, he would check for an instant on him. He doesn't put He blocks down as hard as he can to get this guy to play here. Or, conceivably, we fake the draw with this man with him and these two block in here. So let's just do that one. Um, he goes here on him. These two double down and he's got him. He's coming out for him, but he stays low. Just remind yourself on any play pass, the defensive backs will know it's a pass before anybody else because one of your tackles, head comes up. So whenever you run a play pass, the coaching technique and the skill of it is that the tackle's helmet doesn't come up any higher than his stance. So he's down because we know as soon as he stands up like this, the defensive back, the safety man has no idea what he's seeing, but that's not right. He doesn't stand up like that unless they're going to pass. So he's looking for a pass. So one of the keys for the play pass is to stay low. When that guard comes out, he's out low. He's here, and then he looks back here, but the point is, his hat doesn't come up. So, college ball, hats come up. Stanford, hopefully, we keep him down. And with you guys, helmets are down whenever you play pass. They have to stay down. Because the coach on the other side doesn't know what happened, but his defensive backs do. Okay, so we fake this and throw the hook. This man, of course, is to the post in case they blitz. This man is releasing outside, and he's running the hook, but he's staying on his side of the ball. Now, the key to this is the value of faking the draw on third down is that your linemen can pass protect. They don't have to aggressively block on a play pass when it's a fake draw. They can sit back as long as their helmets don't come up. So you're allowed to pass protect at the same time as you fake a run. So it's a perfect setup. These guys, if you hit the draw on them, even for a four yard gain, They've seen it before. Now the critical part is the fake. So the fake is absolutely critical. One of the key things for the quarterback is that when he takes the ball, it's kept at waist level all the time. He doesn't swing it out of there like a lot of kids. It doesn't come up like this and then back down. You practice with that ball coming straight here and he operates from here. From here it goes to here, from here it goes to here, but it doesn't come up here and then go back down there. Now your typical high school guy is going to do one or two things. He's going to bring the ball up here and, and hand it to somebody. Or he's going to bring it way down here and try to hand it to him. And the key, of course, is that ball comes here and then everything's done from here. Of course, that goes back to Rocky Carzo and Delaware, the great fundamentals they coach. The 
key is the ball is here. Now as I drop back to fake the draw, I want to make sure any time I fake, got a second, come on up, I want to run a tackling. Yeah, I want to just show you for a second about a draw fake or any kind of a fake. If this man is the man that's going to take the fake, I want to make sure that the ball is exposed across his waistline at some point. If it's never there and I do that, I'm not fooling anybody. So the key for me is to extend that ball right in front of him. Now come by, the ball's put back and the arm stays in. So as you look at your quarterback faking, at some point the ball has to be in front of the guy. Then of course at some point you better get it back, pull it away. But the key is that, so if they're faking over here, nobody's fooled. If he comes by the guy and sort of fakes and tries to hide the ball, the guy on the, the play pass, the reason it works because of this guy, not the quarterback. You can get the quarterback to fake all day. Here's the guy. So the key for me is to tell him when he's going to fake that he gets his near elbow up, but he takes his other hand against his stomach, flat, right there, to keep it there. So that I can keep the ball in there as long as I want without the ball being taken out, taken out of my hand or this guy panicking and us losing it. So now the ball is pulled out of there without a problem. If he fakes this way, all kind of things can happen. That is what we want. Now the minute the ball comes out, the elbow goes down. That's the key. The elbow goes down when the ball comes out. Now this man must keep his pads in his, in his stance position. In other words, his pads are just out of his stance so that they can't see whether the ball is there. So the linebacker is standing over here looking, sees a ball extended, an elbow or a shoulder go down, and he loses track of the ball. Now how long does he have to lose track of it? That's good, thanks. How long does he have to lose track of it? Half a second, 0.5. So you've already beaten him. If you've held him 0.5, he's never get in, gonna get into his zone. If he does, he's late. And even the most disciplined linebackers, if they're fooled, now they have to go back in their zone. They're not going to get the same drop they would if you were just dropping. They're going to lose their drop dis discipline. So what you're after when you fake the draw is to keep this guy in place or get him to step forward or hesitate for half a second and that allows him to get past his line of vision. So he can see here but now I'm back in here, there's Chip Myers working behind this guy. He cannot see Chip, he doesn't even know he's there. So now I fake the draw, hold him, Chip works, he doesn't know where, where he is, bang, I hit Chip for the five step draw. So now that's the fake draw hook. Now, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, we don't run that one as much to the left, although it might be better. One of the, one of the disagreements I have with most coaches is when they fake to the left and they have a right-handed man, they come all the way back around again. And I remember watching the, the Rose Bowl and whatever year it was, Ohio State was behind USC as they usually were in those games. And uh, Woody Hayes had his guy going over here, or you know, the coach who did it, faking here, then coming way around, there's only about a minute left in the game. What's he faking for? What's he coming all the way around for? So the absolute key is, for us, when we're going this way, we'll take the ball back here, let this hand go, and work back this way. So we want to stay in a right-handed stance to throw the ball. And that is conceivably the best fake we can have. So we're here, we extend the ball, let him have it, and we're dropping this way. Now our head swings around this way. Now typically, if we're gonna do that, we're gonna throw over here. But the point is, I don't suggest that when you're faking this way, that this guy has to turn all the way around again to throw a football. First place, he's never gonna have the balance he had once, and there's no fake to that. He's going here, now he has to come all the way around the fake, why fake? So to me, the key is, I mean here, 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 let that thing go, now the head snaps around and we throw. And we've done it that way for years, and I certainly believe in that far more than that uh, other way, the Woody Hayes technique. Uh, now, to beat that backer, I'm just going to throw it this way, we'll change it from week to week. I remember our playing the 49ers when I was with the Bengals some years ago, 
And Chip Myers was the hottest guy around at the time, catching the ball, big six foot five guy and <coughs> wonderful receiver. Uh, Chip in that game played from here. And his job was to beat this guy. They have to have two guys in here. Not this one, this one. So Chip would get past this one and work all the way around on this one. Because this one would go here on the fake and then lose track of where he was and Chip was catching the ball, caught four of those passes in one game. This man would release out and hook up to try to get the back of the white with him and Chip would be here, he'd be fooled. Well, so we would say, take a one yard split and beat the far backer. Take a six yard split, four to six, and beat the near backer. Take an eight to 12 yard split and beat the outside backer. So we would say, your job is to release past the corner and beat the W. Your job is to get past the corner and beat the plugger. Your job, that, 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 and go on and on. But the point is, this would vary his split, and now this man would know which of those backers he's working on. Meanwhile, we would tell him, this would be Doug Bressler, by the way, who's sitting right here with, with the Bengals. We, we would tell him which guy to really work the fake on so that we can fool him, get the other one disoriented, and throw the ball. So I suggest that the, that the draw play, and of course it can be run from, from this formation, from green, or I, the same way. The draw play is a hell of a play to fake on third down and hit a hook. And the best run you've got is a draw play on first down. So what happens in the game, you start the game out, and you run the draw. First and 10, make two. Another series, start first and 10, hit the draw four yards, five yards. Whoa, third and six, fake the draw, the linebacker hops up, you get your key first down. So that's the, that's the essence of that play fit. I just got a, another couple minutes, I guess. And, uh, what's that? No more than five. You want to go five steps? No. No? You don't want to go five steps? No more than five minutes. Oh, okay. Well, coach, I do everything he says. Drop me into this stuff. So now, now you have a three-step drop. There, 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 there. That's your three-step. Now you have a five-step drop. And that, of course, is varying the split and taking the draw and hooking. And of course, this guy can come out in the flat wide open. There's five, three, five. Now we go to seven. Okay, now the thing you want to remind yourself is that every play pass, you're trying to fool somebody on the three-step draw we're trying to fool that inside backer to have him step forward and throw the ball right over his head. On the five-step drop, it could be that we're trying to fool the outside backer so that our hooking guy can get around him. Now, when we go into a seven-step drop, we want the defensive backs. They're the guys we want to fool. So the fake is going to last longer. We're going to hide the ball better because we have more time for throwing it down the field. So one of the plays that has become very effective against this defense where there's two deep is we want to fool these guys and what we're going to do well let me let me, let me do it differently we're going to talk too much about this with our arch rival right here tell them what they'll do <laughs> So now, uh, we're going to play against the Sky Zone Safety. We have Isaac Curtis playing right here. He's an NCAA Sprint Champion, great football player. <coughs> Chip Myers was here, well I'll tell you what a passing group. Bob Trumpy, you hear him every week. Uh, Bruce Coslett, Charlie Joyner, these are all guys on one team. Uh, so what we want to do is fake this play, which we all run, hide the ball and fool him and him. That's, those are the guys we're after now. 
So now we have more time. The fullback comes out, and of course he's got the responsibility for this backer because he's releasing inside. If it were a two deep, he'd go to a seam. But let's just say he's going to hook, he's your outlet. He's working against this backer. So we tell Bruce Coslett that you're working three inside release work on that middle backer, and he has a technique which I can go over. We don't have time. Now we do a hell of a job of faking right here. And this sometimes Roger's best going left because of that, the way I did it. But going to the right, we're coming back to the eye formation guy. We put that ball out, he goes by, we let it go, we keep going. Now meanwhile, we take a three big and four quick steps, seven step drop. Now if you watch the quarterback's hands, <laughs> after he hands the ball off, there's a certain natural occurrence that, that, that happens. So it's your job, to, if you're going to fake these things, run the running, stand in front of them, run the running play, then run the play pass, one after another, to see what the differences are. But anyway, when that, when that quarterback usually hands that ball off, his arm swings away. Just watch your guy if you have a chance on film. He gets it and sort of swings away. So, it's our job as we come back out of extend it, bring it back as the guy passes that ball, that arm swings away. That's part of the fake, you see? Because that's what he does on the run play. It's just naturally when he hands the ball off, that's what he does. So, we're going to do all that. And our key is to get Isaac past Thomas, who was a great defensive back for, for uh, Kansas City. Isaac, to beat him on a go pattern, we want to keep, if we're going to throw a go pattern, we want to keep the defensive back backpedaling as long as we can. Because obviously, we're building up speed, and he's running backwards. So by the time we get to him, you've got your speed built up, and he has to turn and try to sprint with you. So on this kind of a play, we want Isaac to release inside, just slightly, and run right at Thomas. Emmett Thomas, right at him, it's not Emmett. Right at him. And then as he gets to him, the last second, go out around him, if you possibly can. So we keep him in his back pedal, and all of a sudden we go out around him, he has to turn and run with us. Now, this fake will hold him just for an instant. So he's a great cornerback. He's sitting back there, he's back pedaling with Isaac, he looks in, and just for a split second, it's maybe a run. He just relaxes a little bit, looking there, we got a 10-3 sprinter coming right at him. So now when he turns, he's really running. And of course, we hit Isaac for the touchdown. So the point is, we want to go inside out of him. So as he comes right at us this way, that quarterback's in there, and we're looking there, and we're seeing the quarterback and him, and we're not sure for an instant who's going to have the ball or what's going to happen. Now we've got that heat right on him. We try to step on his toes and then go right out around. Meanwhile, Anderson has faked, taken that hit step, and the ball is up. Virtually every pass Isaac caught that year, and there were 14 touchdowns, virtually every one was caught of these kind were caught at 45 yards. Virtually every one. Now, Kenny had a great arm, and he could get that ball up, and every one of them, we asked that he throw over his outside shoulder on the go pattern, so that this man can't get there. If you throw, if you wait too long, and your guys will do it, they wait too long and then throw it, and typically, if they want to throw it, it's, they think, uh-oh, I've got to throw all of my might. So they haul off and throw it and turn, and where does the ball go? They every time pull it to the inside, and the safety is coming over. It's going more to him than it is the defender. So you can't wait and have them throw it all their might, or they'll naturally pull it in here somewhere, just by their hip rotation. The ball's got to be thrown with that bounce and right up over the outside shoulder. With you, it might be 30 yards. With Kenny, it was caught at 45, and my guess is Isaac was flying, so my guess is Isaac's 30 when Kenny throws. And 15 yards later, he's got it. Over the outside shoulder. We don't want to go inside because the safety, if he's any good, gets over there. Now, they're there. It's covered. Now, how do you know when to throw a rope back? If you can keep the defensive back in his back pedal, the first 15 to 20 yards, you've got a chance. If he's turned and running, you don't throw the go pattern. So Kenny fakes, and he's looking right now, not so much at Isaac, he's going for the defensive back. He's back pedaling, we got a chance. He's turned and running, no way. I'm throwing back into Coslett over the middle. So Kenny would read the defensive back, 
and whether as to whether he's turned or not. And then he throws to Bruce, who's trying to beat this middle linebacker, and he knows he's going to get the ball late. So there is a play pass to be the defensive back. First, we think here, and so he can't get a jump on it. We hold him, and we make him just an instant indecisive when we get the ball past him. So there is a seven-step drop for a touchdown. I got to go. So uh, we've had a three, five, and a seven. 